I can't even believe that I'm in India right now. I'm at a food truck where they're serving beef. Yeah. I'm not dreaming. No. <laughs> okay, it looks really good. In Pune, we took on India's gargantuan vegetarian platter, piled high with over 50 items. If you eat until you're feeling really stuffed, you gotta take a nap. Today, we're saying goodbye to Pune, hitting the road and heading for Goa. Coastal city unlike anywhere else in India. This is the party destination. What happens in Goa stays in Goa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goa has a unique identity, which guarantees a one-of-a-kind menu. We have a gigantic feast here. I've never had so much Indian seafood. From Goa's forbidden street food, bale bale, bale bale, to the more bizarre eats I never expected to see in India. Have you ever cooked a shark? Yeah, yeah, we eat some. Oh my god! Along the way, I learned the true meaning of hospitality. I just got married today, I think. So pack your Speedo and baby oil. We're heading to go. If everyone knew ooh, all the things I could do, should be down a back on my feet. Cause all I really need is me. If I could just hitting the road, heading south. Bound for Goa. A four hour drive will bring you here. The highway side restaurant called Hotel Parak, a favorite of passing truck drivers and locals alike. The daughter of this family run hotel is here to say hello. Can I rent a room here? No. No. A lot of restaurants in India, they call them hotels. The only one staying here is a nice piece of food. What is the food that's so special here? The red broth, which we call it as tamra rasta. The white broth, which we call it as the panda rasta. And the dry mutton, which is called as sukka. Oh my gosh, I just spent a beautiful, delicious, wonderful day in Pune, but I did not have any meat. <laughs> Right? He's like, oh God, I, how can you do it? I'm really in need of meat. There is a surprise for you. Oh. The guest which we which come to our home, mm. we're gonna have you a turban. What happened? We're not getting married right now, are we? These folks really know how to welcome a guy. They are gently strapping on the local traditional headwear to this plus-sized melon. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look. Um, here we. I look. Stunning. Oh my god. Is there a fan on my head? Wow. This is legitimately a surprise here. So the kind of mark between my eyes on the forehead? On the forehead. Okay, careful. I have rich, voluminous eyebrows, so try not to get that part. This is the kind of tilak welcoming. Guys, what do you think? It's looking good. <laughs> this is one of the coolest hats I've ever had. I'll never be able to wear it again because there was a newspaper involved. At one point there was a stapler. He just did arts and crafts on my head in like 45 seconds and then this is the result. That's pretty awesome. We're here in the kitchen. There's so much action here. Hi there, how you doing? Do you like my hat? I just got married today, I think. This looks really delicious. How many chapatis do you think you make in a day? It's uncountable. Near infinity, like a lot. Right here, what do you call this bread? We call it as a bhakti. I've never seen it prepared in this way. There's kind of an assembly line here. The bread gets completely flattened out by hand. They kind of squeeze some water onto it. And then when it finally gets to the end of the line here, they put it directly on the fire. Then it puffs up and they put it in here. So why can they not use the roller? Why does it have to be by hand? Uh, the dough is really soft. If you get it rolled by the roller, it gets thick. Mm. So it's better to do that with the hands. So this is like old oh, traditional? Yes, yes. This place is all about the broth. The red broth, tamda rasa, is given its red color from a commonly used southern Indian chili, though it looks spicier than it feels, or so I'm told. The red is balanced by the white, a more mellow broth containing spices, coconut milk, and chicken and mutton stock. Both are in a menage a trois with the mutton, boiled then fried before serving. When I was first speaking to the daughter of the owner, I was confused because she said broth, and I thought maybe she meant curry, until I saw the liquid itself, and it is very thin. It is, it's just like a broth. I think what you gotta do is you start with the roti here, rip off some of that, scoop up some mutton, and then give it a little dip. I'm going red first. It's kind of oily on the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
The broth is an Indian rainbow of flavor and aromatic spices. The mutton, however, can break your teeth if you're not used to navigating around the bones. It's like walking on eggshells for your mouth. Mm. Eating meat that's just been kind of hacked apart in random pieces with a little bit of bone, a little bit of meat, you have to be a bit careful. You can't bite with confidence. The broth itself was very rich. To me, it's like the flavors of India. This whole dynamic mix of contrasting flavors and spices. Bam, we're going in round two. This white broth, it's a combination of mutton and chicken stock with some coconut in there. Let's try it out. Mmm, that's really tasty. Much lighter, not very spicy, not oily like the first one. The bread is so light, a little airy. You could even just dip the bread in if you wanted. Mm. Finally, to wash it all down, I mean, there is no more iconic physical gesture in India than the thumbs up. This is my first time having thumbs up, too. It's a big iconic moment. Are you guys ready? <sighs> Belly full, belts on, time to ride. Final destination, Goa. Goa is India's richest state, boasting the country's highest quality of life according to the people that measure that. Beaches, clean air, and its own array of unique food. The Portuguese rule of Goa lasted 450 years, and the influence is obvious, even affecting the local palate. The way they prepare the stuff, the use of like vinegar, it's like Portuguese food, but it has also like Indian influence in it. Mm. My guide this evening, Jasmine. She grew up in Goa, enjoys dancing, and driving in slow motion with no helmet. 20 of the 29 states in India currently have regulations prohibiting either the slaughter or sale of beef, mostly in the north. But as I move south, the attitudes towards beef seem more relaxed. I can't even believe that I'm in India right now. I'm at a food truck where they're serving beef. Yeah. I'm not dreaming. No. Okay, it looks really good. This place has been here for the last 12 years, cooking huge chunks of beef marinated with their own special masala, coated with egg, rice flour, and finally fried. There's a great, really rich, kind of greasy smell in here. Chop it up, stuff it inside a bun, and satisfy your craving. You are so naughty. Beef, pork, you have all the forbidden meats in there. Yeah. Honestly, this is one of the coolest things I've seen in India. I'm gonna just sink my teeth into this. Oh my god. Bale, bale. <laughs> bale, bale. Super crunchy, nice, just oily, beefy inside. What makes it so perfect is the bread. The bread's a little soft and stretchy. It just hugs everything inside. <laughs> There's a good chance a piece of this will fall down. What about cabbage? Will that do anything for you? <laughs> Not interested. I'm just like, I'm no vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have some more. Mm. What can I say? I like my meat. <laughs> you could say exactly that. It's so heavy and greasy that the sweet ketchup is like the perfect balance for it. Very yummy. It's something I did not expect to find in India. It makes me excited. I feel naughty, rebellious, a little tingly at the end too. Goa's food scene comes to life at night. Street vendors pump out the local favorites, but some of the best flavors can be found here. This food area, what is this? It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a name? No. How do you meet people here? You say, meet you behind Don Bosco's. Oh. Can we give it a name today? How about the food horseshoe? Do you see how it makes the shoe of a horse? Sure. She loved the idea. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> the food horseshoe, as I call it, is a collection of food stalls selling all types of made-to-order eats. But we're here for this. They have a little bit of everything here. They have some rice. Fried rice. Biryani. Yes. Liver of duck. Chicken liver. Sorry, I meant chicken. We've got some eggs, some tandoori chicken. What are we here for? Roast omelet. This is a Goan street food favorite. An egg omelet topped with chicken chakuti, a complex spiced chicken curry. I mean, I could try to explain what's inside, but just trust me, it's pretty complex. So right here, this is the omelet. Is this one omelet or two? That's two. So how many eggs? Five. Five eggs? Mm -hmm. We got two orders. Five eggs. Two if I get half. one order, I get two and a half eggs? Yeah. No, you don't. He just cuts an egg in half? <laughs> Yeah, so first we just have the egg, a little bit of onion in there, some garam masala, this looks like coriander. Yeah. He's feeling it out, should he flip, should he not flip? Yes, that was a nice flip. Good flip, sir. Do you see how focused he is? He has no <laughs> yes. idea what I'm saying. So right now he's cutting it up into small pieces and then he's putting it on these stainless steel plates. So right here, this is the gravy, right? Yeah, that's the gravy. Okay, and then here we go. There's a secret delivery hole right here and that's where the food comes from. There's gonna be one more coming soon. Gives it a spoon and delivers it through, oh, a different way this time. 
Okay, so here it is. Alas, they've delivered our food. They gave me a little more than you. I think they just like you better. I think you're right. Oh, this is ours too? Yeah. What's your method? I like like soaking it up. Soak up a little bit of sauce. Yeah. We've got the chicken curry. It's all soaked up. We're gonna try it out. Oh. No, not good. I like it. Bad. Bole, bole. Mm. Bole, bole. What is your bole, bole dance for yummy food? I'll just do that. You're an interpretive yeah. dancer. That's your dance? <laughs> yeah. The curry is delicious. It's like super salty, a little spicy. Even some kind of citrus. There's so many fun things in there, guys. It's really yummy. And this bread, honestly, like take... So this is the one they put on the flat top. I mean, it's like literally the best way to toast bread. You do have to be careful. There are some bones in here. And that's why you want to get it kind of in the deconstructed way, because you don't want a bony sandwich. You're going to shove that entire thing in your mouth? I would like to see. <laughs> yes, I am. Mmm. <laughs> The, bone. the sandwiches here, they're a little bony. You have to be careful. But the flavor is very good. And that is what they call... A roast omelet. That's right. 100% correct. Next time on the Best Ever India Road Trip, Goa Part 2. Cooking homemade Goan Hindu cuisine with the most unexpected ingredient in India. The shark, it tends to have a specific odor. If you don't wash it thoroughly, that odor gets into the fish. Be sure to subscribe and follow along as we eat our way across India. And if you're traveling to Vietnam, let me recommend adventuring alongside a guide from One Trip. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A peace. peace. Do the dance now. What dance? Oh, you really kind of froze. Oh, that. Is that? Yeah, that's a new thing. <laughs>